Now, there are two types of strokes. Do you know the two types of strokes? That's right, ischemic or embolic. That's the clot. That's have a clot going to the heart of the brain. That's like a heart attack. And then the other type of stroke is a hemorrhagic stroke, where, you, where the blood vessel cracks and bleeds. And there's a relationship between cholesterol and hemorrhagic stroke. People with lower cholesterol have higher rate of hemorrhagic stroke. Do you hear what I just said? People with lower cholesterol have higher rate of hemorrhagic stroke. People with higher cholesterol, lower rate of hemorrhagic stroke. Might as well eat your bacon cheeseburgers then, to protect against hemorrhagic stroke. Because when you put more cholesterol plaque, more cholesterol and thicken those blood vessels in your brain, it's going to perhaps prevent them from breaking from the effects of high blood pressure due to your high salt diet. Being on a healthy, or a quote, the word I don't use, plant-based diet, which, are, which could be healthy or not, we don't even know. We don't know what people are eating on a plant-based diet. It could be french fries. Whatever it is, if they have a low cholesterol, they're at higher risk of having a hemorrhagic stroke. And in, in some of these Asian countries, like Japan and South Korea, they have 10 times the rate of hemorrhagic stroke than we have in this country, because they eat so much salt. They don't eat as much meat and bacon, their cholesterols are lower, they eat more fish, but they're bleeding into their brains and dying of more hemorrhagic strokes. Why am I telling you that? Why? Because what good is dying of something else? Don't die of a hemorrhagic stroke. Don't eat salt, because salt doesn't just raise blood pressure. Salt causes microvascular hemorrhaging and weakens the endothelial wall of your blood vessel. It increases the risk of hemorrhagic stroke outside of its risk of causing high blood pressure. Nature puts sodium in natural foods, the amount we need. It's there. We have sodium in our diet. Fruits and vegetables and beans and nuts and, and, and whole intact grains have sodium in them. In natural foods have the amount of sodium we need. We don't have to artificially add extra sodium to the natural foods. Sure, you can add some, 100, 200, maybe 300 with safety, but you can't add 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000 with safety. And I don't care what kind of salt you use. It's all 2,000 milligrams a teaspoon. If you're using you know, salt you get from the rock of Gibraltar, the back of the moon, the fifth moon of Jupiter, Wherever it came from. It doesn't matter. And the mineral content is insignificant. Oh, there's good high quality salt. Well, it's like good high quality heroin. <laughs> I got this good high quality heroin. Must be healthy for me. There's minerals in it. It's natural. It's organic. How could it be bad? It's so stupid. The, al the alternative movement, right? You have this special type of salt that now it's good for us compared to bad for us. That's ridiculous. Your diet has to be, you can't be putting a lot of sodium in your body and not pay a price. And if you're eating right, you want to protect the brain. And almost all these people eating salt, every person that says, I can eat salt, no problem, because my blood pressure is great. I'm not salt responsive. Check them out after the age of 75 or 80 and see where the blood pressure is. They all develop high blood pressure. It didn't matter that they weren't salt responsive when they were younger. Eventually, their sympathetic tone flips and they become salt responsive. And then if they're that person that wasn't salt responsive, those are the people whose sympathetic tone in the brain flips when they're older and then you take the salt away. Those are the people where the blood pressure doesn't come down anymore. It very it takes years to come down because they, they waited so long on the high salt diet because they weren't blood pressure salt responsive when they were younger. You follow what I'm saying right now? Don't wait till you develop the disease. Do it now. You, well, it's not causing a problem. Right, let's go on to diabetes. We're talking a little bit about diabetes because this is a sad illness. People have their legs amputated. They go blind. They go on dialysis. Who wants to live their life on dialysis? And the fatter you are, the more prone you are to diabetes. But if you're overweight, you have insulin intolerance, and you have a problem that's similar to diabetic, diabetes if you're overweight. Fat cells have to come off. The fat around the muscle tissue and the fat around the organs make you insulin resistant, and the pancreas responds by producing huge amounts of insulin in response to the fat on your body. Saturated fat blocks the cavalase. Saturated fat is worse at blocking the uptake of insulin. So when you're eating meat and cheeses and, and more saturated fat, it doesn't just raise cholesterol, it makes you more insulin resistant. We talked about it last night. People arguing that saturated fat is okay to eat, butter is back. 
and to eat all your eggs and butter and cheese you want, all the meat you want. It's just utterly ridiculous. Saturated fat also increases people's risk of cancer too. We're always looking, the people are always looking for some way they can eat whatever they want and claim what they're doing is okay. They want to live in their land of denial, right? And the diabetic medications, by the way, that doctors use, most of them cause weight gain. If diabetes is caused by weight gain, why are we giving the medications that cause weight gain? I think, and I feel very strongly, that the sulfonylureas, like glucotrol and glinase and gliberide and actose, and these drugs should be taken off the market. They shouldn't be allowed to be sold. They're too dangerous to the diabetic. The Accord study in 2008, the National, the, um, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute stopped the Accord study because people who were diabetic given more medical care and more, and they wanted to have better glucose control. So they had more appointments with their diabetic endocrinologists, more important with the nurse practitioners, they followed their finger sticks really carefully, they adjusted their medication to keep their glucose more closely monitored and more favorable, and those people were dying at so much of a faster rate with more medical care that they had to stop the study. Because more medical care means more death, because it means more drugs to control your glucose, and the drugs are pushing the failing beta cells that are overworked to produce more insulin. It causes them to produce more insulin. They poop out even faster. You become more diabetic than the drugs, and the drugs are causing weight gain, and the more insulin is causing more weight gain, because insulin is promoting it as a fat storage hormone, making you get fatter. You lower your blood sugar at the expense of becoming more diabetic. It's a very narrow way of seeing. You can't medicate yourself to wellness. The all, you can... To become un the best treatment for diabetes, vegetables. Eat vegetables. If we didn't have drugs. What if we didn't have drugs? What did we do for type 2 diabetics where we had drugs? The doctor would pick you up at the neck, smack your head against the cement, the wall, and say, stop eating all that food and start eating just vegetables and go for a walk every morning for an hour and come back here next week five pounds lighter. I gotta check your sugar, it's up to 400. We've got to get it down to 300 by next week and 200 by the week before. I want to see you start eating just vegetables, living on vegetables. Eat string beans and broccoli and salad and eat your, you know. But now we have drugs, which is great for McDonald's. Give people drugs. They can still go to McDonald's and milkshakes. Great. Guess the doctors are, have more patients then. More work for more patient rooms occupied in the hospital. What I'm saying right now is that the type 2 treatment for diabetes is barbaric. It's dangerous. If you have diabetes, get rid of it as fast as you possibly can. But I remember, I remember many years ago, I think it was around two, the beginning of 2002, 2003, I wrote an article by a, a woman that wrote an article because she was one of my patients who was a diabetic. She was about 60 pounds overweight. She got well from her diabetes, and she was an educator. She was a principal of a of a high school, and she wrote an article in this magazine that went to other high school principals around the country, and she talked about she reversed her diabetes, and I had helped her do that. So the American Diabetic Association calls me up on the phone, and they go, oh, we read this article about this person you helped with diabetes. Can you send us an article with other cases besides that one? Yes, I can send you an article with 10 cases. I'll send you one right now. So I sent them, they could send me a check for $750. I was, wow, that was great. They didn't print it, the article, don't clap. They got the article, and they called me up. And they said, these people got well from their diabetes and not using medications anymore. We can't print it. And we're sponsored by Eli Lilly, the drug company. You have to show me cases where they improve their diabetic parameters and are using less medication, but you can't put in that they're off the medications completely. So I said, I can't make phony cases. I'm not going to do that. Gave them their check back. Today it's different. I don't want applause. I'm not, not, I don't want applause on that either. That's like sad. But anyway, all these cases, the point is, is that diabetes reverses itself. A nutritarian diet is designed, though, to be glycemically favorable so we can immediately stop taking the drugs. And that's where we're watching the, when we can rate carbohydrates on a hierarchical scale of quality. Right? So we're eating more greens and more beans, and here we don't want to put these diabetics on a potato diet, because that's a high glycemic food. We want to 
tweak the diet to make it maximally favorable. And the reason why potato consumption is linked to, in some studies, increased rectal cancer or other problems is because when you're overweight, you're more insulin resistant. And in overweight people, in overweight Americans, more high glycemic carbohydrates, increased risk of heart disease, and increased risk of cancer. But in a normal weight person who's slim, you wouldn't see those negative effects from potato consumption. But in these diabetics who are so overweight and so fragile, where every day counts to get them to safety, we want to give them a diet with greens and beans and nuts and wild blueberries and kumquats and, and low sugar. We want to keep their diet as low glycemic as possible and lots of string beans and broccoli and artichokes and asparagus and things that, are low, that are, have very low glycemic effects. Fill them up. And, very, and the starches give them the most low glycemic starches like spaghetti squashes and beans because the beans are full of those resistant starches and when you have these resistant starches in the beans they fuel the development of the bacteria that line the villi and they thicken the biofilm that covers the villi and the greens and the beans and the onions and the mushrooms have an effect to make every food you eat less glycemic because the, because the bac bacteria microbiome and the biofilm prevent glucose from going through the endothelial cells quickly. It slows down the rate which glucose enters the bloodstream so your moderate glycemic food becomes low glycemic. Did you follow that? So what are the four foods? What is that? Um, look like Tricky Dick here. What are those four foods? What are those four foods that maximally thicken the villi, that maximally protect... No, the four foods are too raw and too cooked, not nuts and seeds. The four foods are, the two raw foods, two raw foods are green, green vegetables raw, green, and onion, scallion raw, those are, the four, those are the two raw foods, the most powerful for, thickening, for preventing diabetes and raw, thickening the villi, greens and onion family, and the two cooked foods are mushrooms and beans, well-cooked beans. When you do that combination, you're melting away diabetes really fast. We use beans in the diet.